Hello, this is Paul with Logix Magazine. We help you go from self-taught beginner to automation professional. And the way we're going to do that today is we're going to help you review and scope a small automation project. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so this is our project right here. We're going to study the machine. We're going to observe the machine. What my observations are is that there's an HMI, a couple of physical switches and controls. It appears to be a two-part ne two-nest machine. I understand that it is an inspection and clip assembly machine. So it do, does two functions. Down here we notice that we have a pneumatic system. We have an accumulator tank, valves, and regulator. Not really much else going on in the back or sides of the machine. One of the next most important things I want to see is I'd love to see the machine in auto cycle. So here I am observing the um, components up close and now we're going to go right into an auto cycle so we have two parts a left and a right it appears we have clamps two on each side so there's four clamps we have three four or five different clips on the left and the equal appears to be an equal amount on the right and a final cylinder at the top of the left and right and after the cycle we pull the parts out seems pretty straightforward let's go ahead and observe that one more time <clears throat> yep then we part mark pull the part out and pull the, there we go and pull the parts out so a very simple straightforward process Okay, so let's go ahead and get started and begin to scope this project out. Okay, one of the first things we want to do is understand the layout. And what I like to do when doing this is I like to group components together. The HMI and all of our physical switches. I also noticed that there were uh, a stop button, two palm buttons, and light curtains in this on this machine. So I like to group that those pieces together because there's just a, only a few of them. I would consider putting those in my embedded I.O. If I have a limited amount of embedded I.O., I'd put that those items there. Seems like I would have adequate space. I notice that, that there's a left and a right hand nest. Okay, so I try to group each nest to itself. Pretty simple. All right, let's go ahead and get a little further into this all right one of the first things I want to do is I want to list my IO I just want to list every single thing and when looking at a project what I like to do is I like to I like to uh, start at the top and go down so top to bottom left to right so I'm gonna go from the top to bottom and move my way from left to right the same thing would be for the right. I'd be top to bottom, in this case, right to the left. So as I would literally count and list all of the I.O. in that fashion, top to bottom, left to right, and I would list my I.O. And I'd begin to list it all right here. Notice at the top I have my control power, my light curtain, right and left cycle start, air PSI, my reset key. There are four clamps and two uh, metal insert uh, present switches. And I like to have the, uh, those or sensors. I like to have all that right there. And I notice that I can group that together and essentially on the embedded I.O. And odds are, depending on what processor I use, I may have some extra pro some extra I.O. Okay, and then what we do is we begin to list it. All of our I.O. right here. So what I'd like to do is I'd take the and list it all out. All right. 
right, now what we'll do is we will begin to uh, build our hardware, all right? So we'll get the pro program, we'll build it. Now, depending on, the controller will have a lot to do with what controller you have, ex the, the type of controllers your company uses as in preference, what software you have. It will have a lot to do with the unique uh, needs of the machine. In this particular case, I would have used a, a 1769 version 28 compact logics because I had the software I have that those a couple of those um, controllers and the hardware I have point IO so the next thing I want to do is I want to begin building my expansion IO just listing it out to cover all of the IO I put in my uh, from my list so that I cover it all a lot of the initial um, the the H the the um, items that I listed at, to begin with here, the light curtain, the power control, left and right cycle start, I would use that in my embedded I.O. In the 1769, I have 16 inputs and 16 outputs, uh, digital inputs and outputs, so I would begin to use that for my embedded I.O. And then um, and I would end up with uh, some extra, obviously, no problem. Um, and then um, I would begin to build the program adding all of my expansion IO. Now, we notice that we know that when we build our expansion IO, we get module defined data type data tags in our um, controller tags and that's going to be what we look for next. All right? And that's what we're going to get here. So, what I'd like to do is take a moment and share with you uh, this uh, this Excel spreadsheet. So, once we have our our modules installed into our program then what we're going to do is we're going to export our um, tags into a Excel spreadsheet and then I will literally take my notes that I've made and begin to list them right here on my Excel spreadsheet and then in this Excel spreadsheet um, I will list it in, and so control power is input 100, and I will continue to go down the list. Now, notice I have several spare, and that's okay, all right? But, and the reason is, I don't have anything else to put in there at the moment. But when I begin the list and count out, I have 30, 30 um, inputs on my left nest. That, a 32-bit card would be, would cover that, right? So if I split this and put a bunch up here and a bunch down here, it'd be very awkward. Uh, and when I'm defining my my tags, I can do the exact same thing with the right hand side. And having a few extra is not a bad thing because you may end up sometime later on needing to add something in um, into your machine that's not necessarily in the cell in the in the nest. All right. So right and left nest. I will then also list all of, begin to list all of my outputs in a neat and organized fashion. Notice that I have, I have it listed the left and the right, and I keep it very neat and very organized, top, bottom, left, to right, all right? Now, I've, I've essentially scoped out my project. I've built the, the hardware, I've outlined the hardware. And I have um, defined my tags. And essentially, my project is uh, pretty well on its way. Without having written any code yet, I've got a very good solid structure for this project. But it really what happens is I begin to develop that when I begin scoping that project. What I did was I, I grouped my HMI my switches, my controls, because there were only a few of them. I decided to use a 1769 um, controller. I know I have 16 and 16 out, so I have plenty of I.O. But it wouldn't be enough to cover my two nests. So I counted up my, my inputs and outputs for the left and the right nest and noticed I just needed a 32-bit card for inputs on both sides. And I believe it's a 32-bit output for each side. So now I've already defined 
the hardware that I need, the tag description by making my list. Um, I've grouped it so that it's organized in my in my uh, uh, tag, my controller tags database, and I've scoped out my project pretty quickly, pretty efficiently. I hope that this has helped you in, in some way to understand how to scope out an, uh, a small automation project. So this is Paul with Logics Magazine.